it's a question that a lot of people ask, of course, and a question that some people just take for granted. Well, if someone experiences same-sex attraction, if they are gay, uh, that God must have created that. It feels so natural uh, that it must be, you know, how they're made. But I think from our understanding of God and, and you know, what he says to us and how he says it and how he acts, it's really not possible for us from a theological point of view to say that that could be true, that God makes a person with a homosexual inclination. Um, if that were true, then, then one of two things would have to follow from that. Uh, either um, the plan that we see revealed in the word of God and handed on by the church uh, the plan for sexuality, which recognizes that the one place that sexual intimacy is really good and, and holy is in a permanent faithful relationship, namely marriage, between two people whose natures are complementary, namely a man and a woman, and whose relations are open to having children. And if we were to say that God makes people uh, to, to enter into relationships of the same sex, then we would have to say that there's a different kind of morality and even a different kind of nature uh, and not not just different but but opposite to what God has revealed um, that the for some people uh, sexual intimacy requires complementary and procreativity and for others it excludes it uh, completely and God can do anything but he can't contradict his own will and he can't contradict his own word and say two things that are the opposite of each other. So it can't be that God has kind of changed morality uh, to, you know, to, uh, to make it a good thing for people of the same sex to be sexually intimate. Um, so then the only other alternative that I can see is that, uh, well, then we would have to say that God creates people and in creating them gives them unfulfillable desires. It says, this is my plan. I'm revealing it in my word. I'm, I'm, I'm making sure that the church teaches it to you correctly. And, uh, but I'm going to give you personally desires that are opposed to that plan. Uh, if you want to live with me forever and be happy and holy, then you, you, uh, you can't ever act on the desires that I'm giving you. Right. And if you do, then if you act on the desires that I've gave, given you, then that's, that's sinful. And that's not the God that we believe in, right? That's really cruel to, to set people up with unfulfillable desires, to set them up to fail or at least to be frustrated. Um, so God certainly creates every one of us, including our brothers and sisters who experience same-sex attraction, our sons and daughters of God, brothers and sisters of Christ, just the same as everyone else. Um, and God is very much aware of this situation in their life and what they're experiencing. Um, he's concerned about it. He wants to help them to respond to his plan, but he's not the source of their same-sex attractions. It's just not in his nature that it could work that way. Well, I don't think that God perceives uh, you or a person that experiences same-sex attraction as uh, as someone in need of fixing, he doesn't perceive us as uh, damaged or broken or disordered, uh, and certainly he doesn't um, he doesn't require that we be perfect to receive his love. It's his love that that perfects us. It's his love, in fact, that saves us. And the whole reason that he sent his son into the world uh, to, was to set us free uh, from the wound of the original sin. Uh, from the, the wounds that we carry from our own uh, personal sins. Um, but it, we, he sets us free so that we can live fully the life that he has in mind for us to live. And so uh, in regard to same-sex attraction, um, the church does not perceive the experience of attractions as a sin in itself. And so there's not an expectation that, that anybody has to um, get rid of those attractions or become straight in a manner of speaking um, in order to live a holy life. Um, what God is inviting us to do in freedom, every one of us, is to understand his plan and to embrace it by living the virtue of chastity. Um, this sometimes requires that we change our behavior, that we change the way that we, we talk or relate to other people, um, but that's a process of lifelong conversion that every Christian has to follow. And so um, you know, God is offering us his grace 
and inviting us to respond to his grace in freedom uh, and and really uh, wants us to grow um, but that's much different than fixing someone by by um, ch changing their personality or, or, or eradicating their attractions. The purpose that, that God gives to each of us, what we all often call our vocation, uh, is to live out the reality that we are created in his image and in his likeness. And to be created in the image of God means that we are capable of being in relationships. We're, we're persons, we know ourselves, we can communicate with others. Um, so our personhood makes us capable of relationship. And then we're created after the likeness of God, which means our relationships have to be like the relationships between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, which are always a sincere gift of self. So the, the vocation of every human being, let alone every, every Catholic and every Christian, is to love like God loves, to, to be in relationships in which we make a sincere gift of ourselves. In fact, uh, at the Second Vatican Council, uh, the, the church said that it's only in making a sincere gift of ourselves that we actually begin to know who we are and to live fully the life that God's created us to live. So our purpose uh, is to love in such a way that we're giving a gift of ourselves. And then our state in life, the, the way that we live out our vocation, is specified by who gets that gift and, and how total a gift we give. Uh, to that person. So um, many people are, live out their vocation to make a gift of themselves in marriage, it's true. Um, and uh, lots of fulfillment and joy that comes from that gift of self in marriage. Um, others make a gift of themselves uh, to the church as a radical example of holiness by entering consecrated life. Uh, others give a, a total gift of themselves in terms of ministerial service by entering the uh, ordained life as deacons or priests. Um, and even people who are single, um, who live in the world uh, rather than in a religious community, but have made that, that commitment to, um, to celibate chastity, um, they make a gift of themselves in the, wherever their availability and their relationships lead them, whether that's to you know, serving their family in a particular way or serving their community or their parish or, or uh, some uh, group or individual in their life. But every, per every person has the opportunity um, and, and is invited to make that gift of self in which they love deeply and, and make, uh, uh, make commitments, lay down their lives, um, oftentimes exercising that gift of self as a spiritual father or mother, according to whether they're male or female. Um, the, the types of love um, that we, we've already considered you know, are um, friendship and, and affection and charity and, and, and sexual love. Um, all those kinds of love uh, come into play in, those, in different states in life, um, but they're all very much um, fulfilling and uplifting and life-giving. So we, 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 we experience our true identity and understand and carry out our purpose by making that gift of self wherever God's calling us to do that.